Whoops, there we go. Okay. It's according. Okay, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Seven tenths, please. All quiet, please. Thank you. Uh, go ahead, take your notes out. We're going to be uh, getting into the notes after we do a review of the civics information, which it is a complete package for you. And when is the civics test going to be, Robbie? Tomorrow. Robbie, when's the civics test going to be? Yeah, it's going to be not next week, because that's going to be chapter 13 on Tuesday for you guys. And then the following week is chapter 14 on Tuesday. And then it'll be on? Thursday. Thursday, yeah. So you've got a lot of time to get ready for that, uh, as well as do the last two remaining chapters. So I think that'll be fine, because they wanted to have that actually kind of wrapped up before the end of April. I'm like, okay, I can do that. Uh, as you'll see when we go through there, um, it's nothing's too crazy hard. So it'll work out very nicely. And then you'll be able to, like, uh, not get kicked out of the country. Excuse me, graduate from the state of Idaho high school. Okay? That's right. Now Ivan's like, I could do this. I could do this. I could do it today. Actually, uh, people are asking, do, when, are, when is the earliest that you uh, can apply for citizenship? Ooh, I think it's like after being here for four years. After being here for four years. So it's not an age thing, but it's a, like, cons uh, a number of years. Okay, that sounds good. Okay. Um, I'll be handing back, actually, you guys were all here, and the other class was all here, so that's really good. So chapter 12, going to be handing that back um, to you guys. You get to keep the uh, score sheet, and I will get the top part back from you. And, um, yeah, so that was fine. Um, here's something. Somebody was asking about this in 11th grade, and I was like, I've actually thought about this, and it has to do with next year. It's going to come, hopefully, right? The film festival. They're asking about that. And because some of you guys really enjoy doing that. And I really enjoy It's a really good thing to help students get ready uh, for doing the OPVL components of the History IA, which you guys are going to be doing next year, um, as well as the Paper One, which, you know, that's, yeah. Anyway, um, but it's a film thing. It's fun, right? You guys, I don't know, hopefully you guys mostly enjoy that. No, I already told you I'll be here next year, unless something happens. Um, so yeah, we'll be uh, we'll be doing that I think because I'm expecting hopefully that things will continue getting better. Please, I hope that's the way. And so if I assign like a group project to folks, that there shouldn't be any real major ish difficulties. Yeah, some of the 11th graders are like, let's do it. And the remainder of this year, I'm like, oh, no, I think you need a little bit more time to get that prepped up. For those of you guys who weren't here in the past. Uh, usually once a semester, uh, for all my classes, I have people form up into groups, and then they do a film. And it's really cool, very creative. One of the, the parts, like the mandatory part, is to take a source, a history source, and to find out its origin, find out its purpose, find out some values to historians of that source, and find out some limitations to historians of that source. Those are things that happen in IB, so it's really good practice. And I've seen students uh, then by the time they hit their junior and senior year, they're like, oh, I know how to do OPVL. And you're like, oh, those are letters in the alphabet. But they also are things that have to do with, like, history kind of stuff. Anyway, yeah, usually that, the OPVL part is the stuff you forget until you're like, oh, I have to do this? Oh, I know how to do that. That's not that hard. <laughs> I know how to do that. So anyway, we've got the, um, so that's, yeah, I think I'll be doing that next year. Does that sound good? Yeah. How many guys, by show of hands, are like, yeah, film festival. That sounds cool. When he's like, I don't want to be on film. Okay, fine. You can be behind the camera. You can write the scripts. You can do all the, uh, you, can, you can be the catering operation for your group. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can be the gopher. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, exactly. So. And, um, yeah, so. All right, uh, let me hand this back to you guys, and then we'll get started. We'll, do, we'll review the civic stuff. And then we'll get back into it. We've got some really interesting First Amendment stuff. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Isn't civil rights interesting stuff? Isn't it crazy? Yeah, it is. All right, so let me hand these back. <clears throat> Dear disappointment. Just kidding. Okay? Yeah. Do, 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 do. I don't think I can trick too many of you guys on most of these questions. Yeah. It's pretty consistent. Pretty consistent. 
do come in. Make sure you are ready, because if you're not ready, <clears throat> you really need to study more. Just kidding. Okay. Yeah, just because I don't say anything doesn't mean you did bad. But sometimes it's just like the look of disappointment. Just kidding. No? You? You should. Or maybe not. I don't know. Just kidding. Yeah. You're pretty lucky. How did you get number four then? Or excuse me, number one, which is the four, uh, four justices required? Because we talked about that. Yeah, some of that stuff. And then some of this, number nine, take a look at that. Number nine, there is a proposal in the House to add uh, more justice positions, but I don't think it's going to go anywhere. Nancy Pelosi already said, no, that's not going to go anywhere. Right now, I mean, they'll look at it, but I don't think it's going to go anywhere. Okay? Just kidding. Okay? Just kidding. Okay. Oh my gosh, you guys. The next ones you're going to need to know because there's some questions having to do with some of the cases that are kind of tricky. Chris, you're going to need to study. Just kidding. No, that's good. No, good, good for you. Good for you. Oh, last and least. Just kidding. Good job. Yeah. Yeah, so you got to say, you, it's like it shouldn't be a surprise because, hello, it's on Power School. The first one was probably the most tricksy one because most people are like, I think it needs five people. Was that a little confusing? Yeah, it's probably my crazy uh, explanations. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Good, good, good. Thank you, thank you. Curry can't quite get back there. Grazie, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's easy to pass out stuff when there was like half of you here. So it'll fit. Because it won't. Because it won't do that. It's weird, but you know what? If you want to do just one, just do it like that. I don't know. <laughs> Something. All right, take out your civic stuff. I'm going to go through this with you guys here quickly to make sure that you have a uh, complete understanding as far as what's going to be on this test. Some of this is government related, which is good, so we can do it at, uh, toward the end of the government. Uh, there's a little bit more government topic stuff, uh, but the information that's going to be tested on, even though we haven't covered it, it's not that hard, really. It's really very doable. And then there's some history stuff that was covered in the past, doable. There's some stuff that's going to be in the future, it's okay. What you basically do is you make sure you go through here and just know the bullet points. Like the example I was talking about with Benjamin Franklin, flip over to number 68 on page 7. Uh, obviously, it's good that this, uh, is this a fill-in-the-blank test? No. What kind of test is it? Multiple choice. So some of them are pick among these four, or some of them are like, which of these four is not the case? Does that make sense? So they have some weird things like that. Um, yeah. So yeah, that's like Benjamin Franklin's famous for all kinds of stuff. But look at the different bullet points on here, and that will kind of like help narrow you into what's going to be on the test. Does that make sense? OK. Let's go to page one. Take a look there. We've got basic American democracy stuff. Uh, even some things that we've hammered on, like number seven. How many amendments does the Constitution have? 27, 27, 27. Right? Okay. Uh, take a look at uh, page one. Anybody have any questions on page one? Right? Flip over to page two. It actually is page two, and it goes in sequence now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there we've got some of the basics Declaration of Independence, freedom of religion, the economic system. Sometimes I look at this, I'm like, 
it's not completely 100% capitalistic. It's like a mixture. It's a mix of, anyway, but whatever. That's what the government says it is. And so, therefore, that's what the answer is going to be. Okay? Because do we have socialism in our economy? A little bit. Yeah, we do. Yeah, a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because one of the social, I, I mean, socialism sometimes is like regulation and some redistribution of things. Like, for example, um, are people that don't have much income getting a free public education? Their children? Yeah. Okay, you don't have to pay for your education. So there's some components of that. Obviously, you get more in other countries, but whatever. I'm not going to get into a big argument with the people that made, the, made this thing. Okay? Ivan, you can do that when you're actually doing your interview with them someday. Okay? You can say, you are asking me a question, and I'm going to give you more information than you were expecting. Uh -huh. All right, so there we go. Uh, the bottom half of page two, systems of government, basic stuff. We've actually, some of this stuff we've done this year. Okay? Questions about anything on page two? Okay, good. Turn to page three. On that one, you do need to know the names of folks. And I can tell you it's a little tricksy. Um, you know, if you got the United States senators and one of the choices is Mike Crapo and Mike Simpson, is that correct? No, it's only half correct. What about uh, uh, Jim Risch and Russ Fulcher? Is that the U.S. senators? No, it's only partly correct. So make sure you got those ones lined up, those different people, because, yeah, the way the questions are worded, you want to make sure you nail that down, okay? And, of course, the test is, the correct answer is going to be for the date of the test that you're taking. So that's why Joe Biden and Kamala Harris are the correct answers relative to those questions 28 and 29, okay? Anything jump out at you that's kind of crazy there on page 3? No? It's pretty straightforward? Okay. All right, let's flip over to page 4. This was interesting, number 36. I held off on making you know all of the different cabinet positions, like the uh, Secretary of Agriculture, Commerce, Defense, Education, Energy. I mean, it's like, hello, there's a lot of details and so forth about the various different uh, government uh, departments, like agriculture. What does agriculture deal with? Crops. Trees. Trees. Trees are big crops. In the state of Idaho, the Department of Agriculture is in charge of the Forest Service, which covers lots of trees. They're big crops. Which is interesting because if you talk about like the national park system, is, are those big crops? They're like, but they're trees. Ah, so depending on which part of the government's in charge of which component of the federal land gives you an idea as far as like what that land might ultimately be used for. Anyway, I digress. Uh, those are all the cabinet level positions, so you'll need to know those. Okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah, apparently. Yeah. Yeah, they also supervise in the Senate, you know. Go ahead, go. No, it's, kind of, it's almost sort of like, okay, we're going to let you be in the cabinet. I suppose if you go back further, it might not have necessarily been. Okay, just because you're in the cabinet doesn't necessarily mean you're like super de duper. Um, but that's, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, anything else there on page four? We've got John Roberts in there, Chief Justice, number 40, nine justices. Okay. And it's interesting because, like, you know, what does the judicial branch do? They do a lot of things, but those are the four bullet points, so know those four bullet points. Okay. Mostly the test, if there's like an egregious something wrong, then it's not going to be the correct answer. Mostly, I think the questions are fairly under, understood. But if you get tripped up on like little numbers, like how many years does a member of the House serve? You're probably going to be given like a choice of, you know, two, four, six, eight. Who do you appreciate? What is the correct answer? What answer do you appreciate? America. Two is not the, two is the answer, not America. Okay. All right, any other questions on page four? Okay, flip over to page five. Okay, obviously it's interesting because there's a real focus on like the responsibilities of citizens in the country, um, the responsibility of judges, uh, you know, in states and things like that. So Brad Little is our governor. The president's Democrat right now, Nancy Pelosi, is the Speaker of the House. Okay, now we get the rights of citizens. Biggest thing is, do you have a free speech right if you are a, uh, not a U.S. citizen? Does Ivan have a free speech right in this country? Yeah. Yes, if you're in this country, I have a free speech right. What rights do you not have, Ivan? No. Yeah, and these guys don't have it yet either. Why not? They're not old enough, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
Um, other than that, um, and when you turn 18, you uh, have right responsibility to serve on a jury. Uh, they don't have, I don't have, uh, they don't let non-citizens serve on juries, uh, for the most part there. Um, but otherwise, like everything else, I mean, that's in there. So you can't say to somebody, you know, you're not from this country, you can't speak. And they're like, yeah, they can. You just can't vote. Speaking and voting is a wonderful combination to have. All right, take a look at there at number five. Any other, uh, anything jump out at you that you need a question? Pretty straightforward. I'm glad they have that whole section on rights and responsibilities. That's a big, big thing. And it carries over then to number six. Okay. Do not get tripped up. Number 56, the answer is April 15. The answer is today. April 15. Okay. Actually, I'll throw a question out here. Raise your hand if you know the answer to this question. What is the perfect date? Didn't we do this? In, yeah. We did this last year in, in history. The perfect date. Describe the perfect date. April tw was it April 22nd or April 23rd? April 22nd. It's not too hot. It's not too cold. A light jacket will do. From Miss Congeniality, exactly. Yep, April 22nd is coming up. Do, do not, I have to be careful when I say this, because last period they're like, oh, is it going to be a different answer on the test? Last year and this year, the United States government's like, chill a little. Your taxes aren't going to be due as earlier because of all the COVID craziness and so forth. So. Selective service. Okay, selective service, number 57. There was a question about that. That is uh, not quite the draft. The United States government collects the names of 18-year-old people who are older than 18 in case we ever do come back with a draft. I had to put my name on the very first selective service thing because they actually started it uh, when I was you guys' age, a little bit older. Okay? I had to fill out paperwork. Now it's basically a drop-down menu for you guys when you're applying like for colleges and things like that. And it's not for everyone. Raise your hand if you know for sure that you're, you don't have to sign up for the selective service. Wow. Yes, why not? What makes you so special? That I am woman, hear me not sign up for selective service. Yeah. Okay. Although, show of hands as to who thinks women should be eligible for the draft if we ever have a draft again. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> like, yeah. Stirring things up, yeah. Comes around and goes around. Okay, so. Anyway, we don't have a drink. We just kind of have, going, going back to it, we have, I won't say it's exactly a lame kind of a thing, because it's a database. I mean, y'all are some part of some database in the United States government anyway. Yes, go ahead, Gabe. Now, you probably would have to sign up for selective service as to if we ever had a draft again, those would be very relevant questions depending on how we set that up. And so, yeah, physical kinds of things. The last time we actually had a draft was the Vietnam War. And you could be exempt from the draft if you were in college. So there were some young men that stayed in college for a long time. And then like, okay, wow, well, you just graduated from college. Now you're eligible for the draft. I'm going to Canada. Right. And, uh, uh, you know, in violation of the uh, draft until who saved their bacon? Do you remember? He's on the bottom row. Jimmy Carter, very good. An amnesty for all of the draft evaders. Yes. Uh, so, funny little story. I have, you know, two grandpas. One of my grandpas got drafted. And because of that, my other grandpa was like, ooh, yeah, I'm going to school. It was kind of funny. During the Vietnam War era? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, anyway, long story short, um, anything else on page six? Now we're starting to get into American Revolution stuff. Yeah. Because that's the rule. Right? I'm going to ask you, Ivan, when you do this, you're not going to have to do all 100, but you don't know which 20 you're going to do. And how are you going to have to show your knowledge of this information? Do you remember? Yeah, it's an oral. It's like an oral exam. So they have to be prepared for everything, and then they actually have to be able to, like, talk about it in a cogn cognizant manner. As opposed to you guys, you're looking and going, eeny, meeny, miny. <laughs> you got to pick, you know, you got a 25% chance of getting it right. If you get it wrong when you're doing the oral exam, they might be going, mm-hmm. It's like you're not going to be a citizen in our country. So. 
Is that how it works? Sometimes, when I was a kid, there was a clock that wasn't digital because we were smart children and we knew how to read the big hand and the little hand. And so if you were taking an exam and you didn't know, you looked up and you looked to see where it like the second hand and if it was in the first quarter, it's A. If it's in the second quarter, it's B. I am kidding. No, but that's what some people do. I mean, it's like flip a coin, you know. True, fault. Yes. Whatever. Yes. Shh. Shh. Let's have it quiet. A Piper is trying to ask me a relevant question. You guys need to be quiet. Shh. Piper. Which number? 57, okay. Yeah. Yeah, so I don't have to register for it anymore. You're in violation of federal law. And actually, for guys, this is where it's relevant. Shh. If you're applying for it, and I think you, once you do it, that's good to go. I mean, I fill out paperwork for it and so forth now. Guys, it'll be like a little pop-up thing, kind of like a uh, disclaimer thing. <laughs> do, you, do you really read through all the stuff on the disclaimers? You're like, scroll down, click, I accept, go. If you want to be eligible for, like, you know, federal funds or any kind of thing, I mean, they make it really, really hard for young men to, like, not do it because basically they're saying, okay, well, it's not like somebody's going to come around and arrest you for not, not signing up for the selective service, but they could deny you, um, like, federal funding uh, and support for, you know, college. So it's a way of kind of, like, providing a net and going, if you want to get to the other side, Whatever, it's a pressure tactic, okay? And it's pretty effective. All right, uh, number seven, page seven, okay? A lot of this stuff was stuff from last year. Constitution, 1787, there's the 13 original states. Maine was part of Massachusetts, and Vermont was part of New York. Now they're independent states, or at least they're separate states, at least, okay? Any questions from number, uh, number seven? Pretty straightforward stuff there. Okay, let's flip over to page eight. Okay, father of our country. How many children did the father of our country have? None. Only two adopted children, I think it was, yeah. So, yeah, he did not, he was not the biological father of anyone. Um, as far as these ones, a lot of the ways the questions come up, so it's like you got wars in the 1800s. Duh, the War of 1812. That was, what year, what year did the War of 1812 end? No, 1814. What year was the treaty, excuse me, 1815. What year was the treaty ending the War of 1812 signed? Well, who kept fighting? Where? Who was the American general? Because we covered it last year. Hello. Stuff sticks, you know? It sticks. Okay. Yeah, well, there you go. Um, so that's pretty self-explanatory. Number 77, Susan B. Anthony. Woo! Uh, first woman to, uh, first real named uh, female in, in U.S. history to be on a coin. She was on the, um, uh, S -S 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 Wait. okay, however you pronounce that. She, I think she was the second one, okay? And I think probably the next one, I mean, there's, we've had sort of the mythical, like, liberty and so forth, you know, female liberty. Uh, but Susan B. Anthony, Sacagawea, and I think the next one, I'm guess anticipating probably within the next four years on the $20 bill, I think Harry Tubman. Yeah, I think Harry Tubman. Okay? You know, give up your seat. You got it wrong. Sorry, just kidding. That was like a Rosa Parks joke. Okay. All right. Uh, any questions, other questions on number eight? Page eight. Okay, let's go to page nine. Take a look at page nine. Um, take a look. This is kind of interesting. Uh, number 82, uh, we got Dwight D. Eisenhower. He makes the list. He's on the test. Here we go. President, the 34th president of the United States. Um, much well, very well known prior to being elected president of the United States because of his leadership as the overall commander of the Allied forces um, for the D-Day invasion and the, uh, the forces in Europe. So that was a big deal. So he makes the uh, thing for that. Martin Luther King Jr. is in there. Okay. Um, Franklin D. Roosevelt's in there. 
Sometimes people get this a little confused, number 81. Uh, granted, this is stuff we're going to be covering next year. Some of it, you know, has been covered in bits and pieces at different times. Jap Japan, Germany, Italy. Who surrendered first? Italy. Who surrendered second? Japan, Germany. Who surrendered last? Yeah, you got a correct answer. Okay. All right, and then number 87, I think that's going to be which of these is not a Native American tribe? And the list of Native American tribes, that is actually, maybe, I want to say, like maybe a third the size of all of the registered Native American tribes in the country. Those are some of the largest ones, That's some of the larger ones. The Navi is not an American tribe. They exist on some planet with their blue neighbors. Yes, they are blue. That's what I said. Yeah, I don't know exactly. I mean, yeah, somebody can look that up and find out exactly what the number of federally recognized American Indian tribes. It's actually a very important designation because there are lots of important rights that are associated with having an American uh, Native tribal status. Okay? Like, for example, if you're in a state and you have that status, you may be able to um, establish a casino, as an example. Mm -hmm. uh, in, instead of if there are, I mean, it, not anyone, you can't just walk up and go, I'm going to set up a casino, you know, because they might not have that allowed for. But that's a very, very important designation because that would potentially provide a lot of um, income, maybe to the Native American tribe and also perhaps to um, <laughs> the gaming industry. Did you have a comment, question? Yeah, sorry. My brother in law is partially Native American in Oregon, mm -hmm. and he gets all, they like, they get like free medical stuff. He gets like free education if he's like on the reservation. So like they get all kinds of different perks. Yeah, and if you got a good lawyer, uh, lately you can actu actually get like treaties, yeah. <laughs> like for fishing rights and water rights and things like that, actually enforced by the federal courts. They're much better about it now than when the treaties were first uh, signed. 574. Thank you for looking that up. 574. That's that's a lot more <laughs> than this. This is not one third. Anyway, the Navi is not one of them. So please do not get that one wrong. Navajo is different. Yeah, totally. Any other questions from page nine? Okay, let's look over to page 10. Okay. Geography. Geography. Hello. Geography. Here's, a, here's an interesting question then. Which uh, is there more of? States that border Canada or states that border Mexico? Canada. States that border Canada. Which is the longer border? Canada is. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah. But I mean, like, some of them, it's like a little bit of Idaho or a little bit of Vermont and, Mass uh, you know, New Hampshire. Okay. Um, yeah, anything else on page 10? Basic stuff there, geography stuff. All right, flip over to page 11. Okay. Um, it does exist. Yes. It does. Yeah, there's more people in this country that know about Ohio than know about Idaho. My sister, who lives in Illinois, who graduated from the from U of I, which is the University of Idaho, thank you very much, not the University of Illinois. She was talking to somebody about where she was born in there, and she was like, Idaho, that's out west. And she goes, no, 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 that's just, that's just, that's just south of Minnesota. No, it's not just south of Minnesota. Iowa is south of Minnesota. And number 99, you need to know this as well. If you look at the British calendar, they do not have July 4th on the calendar. Just kidding, they do. But they don't celebrate it, yeah. Yeah, when the kids, like, had a fit, slammed the door, and left the house, yeah. So we always celebrated in our household, remind my mom of, like, you know, yeah. Woohoo, because she's British. All right, questions, comments, civics, you got it? Maybe, maybe everybody get at least a 70, that's North Star's requirement uh, for, for graduation and so forth. 
you can retake it at least to 70%. I think you guys, the other class was like, we can do this. We can do better than you guys. They were actually saying that. I'm like, whoa, whoa. So I'm like, that's one person. Can you, can you get above a 90? All of you? I think you can. It's not that hard. Is there anything really hard on that packet of stuff? No. It's a relatively low graduation rate. And here's what happens. Let's have, let's have a quiet. <clears throat> Yeah, thank you. Uh, when you pass with a 70% or more, I will be so happy to take your name and give it to Mr. Pettit. And Mr. Pettit will take that information and put it in your permanent North Star file. Exactly, as in, check, you did it, right? Ask the U.S. government. I'm sure they're not going to give you a quick reply. If they do, the answer will be probably no. You have to do the uh, oral interview. You have to be ready for all 100, 100 things. And you need to be coherent in the English language using the correct uh, information on how many of them? So, but you don't know which one they are. So you have to get ready for all of them. And there are people who love being in this country, who have been invited to come to this country, we have, who are here gone through the whole legal process and so forth, and they really want to be U.S. citizens. Do they care about this country? They care a lot about this country. They care about knowing the history. I would, st this is really going to embarrass you. I've had, because I would, when, when we had exchange students here, and they would like, typically they would be in my 10th grade classes, and I would have them do this test too. On the whole, they did a lot better than many, not all, of the American-born North Star students. Yeah. So, because in fact, before you come over to this country, if you're learning about, you know, in the language and so forth, you need to learn a lot of stuff. And they care a lot about it. And new citizens, Ivan, who's going to be a new citizen someday, cares a lot about that. Because if you know much about what's going on in other parts of the world, and you guys have already learned about other parts of the world, you know that what we have here is great the rights and responsibilities that we're in the midst of talking about right now, which we're going to get back to, the civil rights and so forth, that's very important. We're not perfect, hello, I mean, no country's perfect, but we got a lot of good stuff going for us. And we want to keep that way, okay? So that's why, like, the new citizens, we really like it when they sort of buy into what we've got going, like voting, and freedom of expression, agree to disagree in a nonviolent manner, please, you know? So those are good stuff, right? Disagree violently. Agree to disagree in a non-violent way. We are issue A. What are, what position do you take on? Here, here we go. Here, fictional things so that you understand this. Issue A. You've got two choices: green, yellow. What position do you take on issue A? You're wrong. It's a yellow. Thank you, so do I. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> no, we disagree over the nature of what is the correct answer. You are completely wrong in your green adherence. We are agreeing to not to be disagreeable. <laughs> la, 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 I'm going to move on. Shall we move on? Yeah, we're going to move on. <laughs> oh, you're having way too much fun. Yes. All right. Let's get back to it. Let's get back to what Alaska students do when the Olympic torch comes through their neighborhood. They decide to have a ridiculous protest and they get suspended. All right. Here we go. Let's get to it. We're talking about the uh, context of freedom of expression. Okay. So we've got the First Amendment, free speech protection levels. All right, going back to here as a point of reference, this is going to be interesting because we're going to see an interesting mix going on here. Uh, my understanding is relative to, I think, probably their age uh, and the use of marijuana, that that would be an illegal activity. Okay, so um, even though some states have 
in Oregon, Colorado, Washington, and so forth, allow for legal use of marijuana. I think most of those ones still have it illegal under certain age. Okay? Um, so you've got a mixture of, I don't know about political, religious, you've got a religious connotation in there with Jesus, and then you've got this illegal advocacy thing. Okay? This case actually did go to the Supreme Court, so write this down. It went to the United States Supreme Court. And you're like, really? Seriously? And you know, people get really nervous about this because when the Supreme Court, how many justices is minimal requirement for the Supreme Court to accept a case? Four. Four, that's right. Although if you're one of those four and you really care about that case and you want it to turn out a certain way, before you like admit it or accept it, you probably want to get a sense that maybe there's enough that are going to go with you. Because how many do you need to have in order to have a winning decision? Five. Five. Very good. Okay. That's why I've been reading about this, and I'll keep an eye on this as far as like uh, the very pivotal abortion issue. Some people are like, oh, there's six justices that are going to go along with getting rid of Roe versus Wade or severely changing it. And other people are like, I don't know. I don't know if Roberts or maybe Gorsuch will necessarily do that. It's a very interesting question. It's one of the big questions going on right now as to what is the court going to do? Because there's plenty of potential cases, because there's quite a few states, like Mississippi and others, that have said, if uh, uh, the Supreme Court accepts our case, basically our law is that we go back to the way things were before Roe versus Wade, as in uh, many, if not most, uh, abortions would be not available, okay? I mean, some exceptions, but we, but I, I digress. In other words, the Supreme Court takes up cases, and they're very interesting, and sometimes people are like, oh my gosh, I hope this doesn't really just kind of like mess things up. So like, for example, on this one, we talked about this last time. This was the girl, remember the, remember the facts of this case? Yeah. This was the girl who was like mad at her cheerleading squad and just started going off on Instagram, what was it? Snapchat. Snapchat, Snapchat, and just going off on it, and F this, and F that, and F this, and so forth. She deleted it right away, but stuff stays on the internet forever, and it made its way to school officials, and they're like, you're suspended, and she appealed. Did she win? Yeah, so who's appealing into the Supreme Court? School is. But it's just a fascinating thing because I remember over the years, and this is really, really an important thing, because is the school trying to prevent bullying from taking place? Hello, yeah. It's bu now hold on, hold on. Yeah, no, I know. But here, let me finish, let me finish. It's not bullying, no, but the context is this, okay? Shh. So, Lizzie, can the school do something, since you uh, brought yourself forth in this whole discussion and so forth, can the school do something about other students who are bullying you while at school? Yes, of course. You're in the school confounds and so forth. So here's the question, though. Can the school do something about students who are bullying you outside of school? That's the tricky thing. Does the school, does the school want to try to help and reduce bullying that takes place outside of school? Yeah. How much leverage do we have? That's what's kind of going on here. That's, what, that's, why the, that's why, you know, yeah, I mean, she's using profane language and so forth outside of school, but, I mean, people do that, and, you know, what can the school do about it? I think it's probably most relevant in the whole bullying thing, okay? Because schools are really concerned about that, and they know that we only have so much leverage and so much access. Shh. We can't do much. And I think the Supreme Court has accepted this case. You can write this down. Mr. Hansen predicts that she's going to win again. Oh, wow. And, the, and perhaps the reason then the Supreme Court is taking that case is so they can make a really clear decision, sending the message to everyone out there that you can encourage students to behave well outside of school on Snapchat and social media and so forth, but the school only has so much leverage. All right? I mean, if... If, they were, if it was a kid wearing an armband that said, F off, cheerleading coach, and they walked around with that in the school, could the school punish, uh, discipline that? Yeah. But if it's taking place outside of school, that's problematic. Question? Because schools are generally government, right? Public schools, yes. 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 So 
Yeah, so, the, so that is basically kind of like if, you, if you're, you have a right to attend a government school, public school, change the facts around. If this applied to, let's say, a Bishop Kelly, a uh, uh, cheerleader, um, can they govern, can they discipline behavior outside of school in a private school? Yeah. Yeah. Do you have a right to attend a private school? No. no. So they can, they can put all kinds of additional uh, requirements there that wouldn't exist because they're not the government. They're a voluntary private thing. Whereas you guys have a right to attend public school and the government is limited in what we can tell you what you can and can't do, particularly if it's outside of school. So I think she's going to win again. Okay? What about North Star? We're, we're, we're public. It is a public charter school. Yeah. So, yeah, you don't pay. You apply to come in and Basically, it's kind of like, I think most people can get in at this age. I mean, there's not massive waiting lists. I think like kindergarten and first grade and some of the other early elementary ones, they have to do the whole lottery. So, so like sometimes parents would be like, they have the older sibling uh, uh, go into the school as like an anchor baby. Um, I don't know if that, <laughs> so because cause there's a preference. If you are, if you've already got a sibling in the school, then you have a preference priority over other kids relative to getting into like a kindergarten class because the kindi kindergarten admission is crazy. Yeah. I actually had a former student going, do I have preference as a graduate of North Star? I'm like, I'm sorry. I don't think so. It's not in, it's not in the, how the charter is set up. So, yeah, if you're like, if you already got a sibling in or, you're, or you're, you've got a family on staff, that's, you know, cool. So. I suppose I could adopt. I'm not kidding. I'm not going to adopt anybody. Okay. I already got two kids. Okay. I'm not going to adopt you. That what children beyond. So yeah, let's let's do big, huge, stressful things like retirement and adopting Caden. There we go. <laughs> You're already in school. All right. Here's the facts. Let's get the facts here. Let's get the facts because this, listen very carefully to the facts and it, help, it might help you understand how the decision is ultimately made because I'm going to ask you how you would rule. In fact, on this one, think about, we'll have like, you can be a quarter of two, a quarter of three, a quarter of three, a quarter of three, a quarter of two, a quarter of two. Oh, we'll have you be a quarter of three right here, a quarter of three, a quarter of two, right? Because you can't be just, right? So how would you rule in this case? Here are the facts. All right. It's okay. Um, here are the facts. Uh, I believe it was the uh, Olympic Games were going to be taking place, I want to say, in like Salt Lake City or something like that. Anyway, so what happens then is oftentimes they'll like run the torch through, you know. I think they're still doing that in anticipation of the Tokyo 2020 Olympics, which has been postponed to 2021, which hopefully will take place this summer or otherwise it will get canceled. I don't know. So anyway, they take the torch through, and so they were going through, I believe this is Anchorage, uh, one of the, I think it's the largest, yeah, it is the largest community in, in Alaska. And um, so it's going by the school, like during the day. And so the school, this is a key thing, I'm telling you, so this will give you a little hint, not necessarily how you would rule, but maybe how the court would rule. Um, a relevant point, it's during the school day, so during the school day, they let... The students go out onto the street ne right where the school is, and it's kind of like a fire drill. You know, it's a fun fire drill. And then they wait for the torch to go by, and they applaud, and then they go back into class, and they do whatever, you know, they're doing that day. Well, in the midst of that, some of the students unfurled this sign right here. This is actually a photograph that was taken of the, the situation, okay? They put a sign up there that says, Bong Hits for Jesus, okay? school was not too happy about that because they said that that is an advocacy for the use of marijuana, which is illegal certainly among uh, that age population, okay, basically using like a water pipe in, in order to uh, breathe in uh, marijuana smoke, okay? Anyway, they call it a bong hit. Um, although, it's got the Jesus part. So, the students said, you know, we're, we're just expressing our First Amendment freedom. And the school said, yes, well, you're advocating, um, you know, uh, illegal activity. They're like, well, you know, we're also advocating Jesus. And that's, uh, you know, I don't know if they made that argument. Ultimately, their attorneys did. 
who are advocating Jesus, which is a highly protected, you know, religious component of our speech. Okay? Here's the deal. Um, some of the students were suspended. They appealed the suspension. I always forget which one it is, Morse or Frederick. One of them is the student. The other is like an official in the school. But whatever. It's the Morse versus Frederick case. Okay? I'm sure somebody could look that up real quick and figure out which one the teenager is. But honestly, it doesn't matter. because I, You'll find out. I want to know what you guys would do. It doesn't matter. No, I mean, honestly, because, because the plaintiff, the part one bringing the suit, um, it could be switched depending on who won at the lower levels. You understand that, remember? Plaintiff versus defendant, but depending on who lost and is appealing, they would become the appellant, and that would be the first name listed. Does that make sense? Anyway, so sometimes the, the things get all mixed up. So, like, one of the cases you're going to learn about later on is Miranda versus Arizona. Well, I can tell you this much. It's a criminal case, and the case started out Arizona versus Miranda. Okay? State of Arizona versus Miranda for uh, conducting criminal behavior. But it ended up being called Miranda versus Arizona because it was Miranda, the loser, who was appealing up to the Supreme Court. Sorry to digress. But here's the deal. The school wanted to discipline and suspend, and they were saying we have a right to do that because of the nature, uh, the unprotected nature of the illegal speech on a, at a school function. This is not off campus. Granted, it's not like they're sitting down at their desks, but it is a school function. Let me just throw this out just by way of argument. How many of you guys play sports for North Star? When you are off campus attending a sporting event, are you bound by the school rules? What have you been told? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, so that's, that's the deal. Um, and it's always interesting because, like, people would ask that. I use the analogy when I was taking uh, students on overseas trips. Are we bound by the school rules? No. It was a private trip that I would have. What rules are we bound by? Mine and the company that I go with, <laughs> in addition to the rules of the countries that we're actually in. Okay? So, yeah. Nah. You're like, oh, I can, I'm just following Mr. Hansen's rules, Mr. Hansen's free speech. Why are they taking me away into confinement in China? You know, figure that out. Because <laughs> yeah, they got different rules. Question, comment? Frederick was a student. Okay, thank you. All right, so, and so Morse must have been the school official, I believe. All right, so do you have, an, have I given you enough facts on that? So it's basically like, can the school discipline the student speech? Interestingly enough, and this happens on these cases, you get people who want to give their brief. They're not part of the case, but they want to submit a brief to the Supreme Court going, be careful how you decide this because this could impact us. What kinds of groups, <coughs> hint Jesus, uh, would want to get their opinion across to the Supreme Court and go, hey, now be careful when you're ruling on this that you don't mess with our views and our interests. Religious free speech groups, right? I don't know about that. Actually, it's interesting because some people, I, I never heard this argument, I thought of it the other day, I never heard this argument that one of these children is uh, someone who have Latino influence and his name is Jesus. Uh, oh yeah, that was us, that was us. Was that you guys saying that? No, I think what the reference is, is to the historical religious Jesus. Absolutely. Do you have any other questions? So here's what I want to know. Uh, we'll give you like a minute or two, no more than that, really. Discuss in your little groups of two or three, um, who should win? Should it be, who is it, Frederick, the student, or the school district? Okay, go for it. Yeah, go. Well, have you got a ruling yet? Get a ruling and then you can go. Who wins? Student of the school. Ooh, you're the deciding factor. Who wins? School? Oh, interesting. G come up with a reason. Who wins? Who do you think should win? Yeah, just barely. And it's during the school day. Yeah. yeah, it's actually interesting because I want to say 
And looking at this again, I think they're on the, they might be just across the street from it because I think they line up on both sides of the street as it went by the campus. But it's still like a school activity, kind of like a track meet sort of thing. Very good. Okay. Okay. Who wins? I know it's a joke. You mean the school get mad about it? Yeah. I don't know. I can't see their pockets. It's winter time. I mean, it's always winter in Alaska. Who wins? <laughs> be nice. Yes, you can agree to disagree, but don't be. And actually, that's not necessarily a negative. Just the way you said it. Who wins? The student. In this particular case, the kids. Okay. And you say the school. Okay. Who did you guys say wins? School or student? The school. Okay, and you guys said the school, the students, the school, the students. Okay, yeah. What? Yes, quick. Okay. Question. Okay, all right. All right, let's get your ruling on this, okay? By individual show of hands, how many of you individually uh, ruled in favor of the student? Uh, by individual show of hands, how many ruled in favor of the school? All right, so this is going to be pretty good. Let's start over, over there. You guys, uh, who is going to speak on behalf of your little court over there as to why you ruled in favor of the school? So, Go for it. So we voted the school because it's on campus during school hours, and it's a school activity. So like in every way, shape, or form, the end of the other What about the nature of the speech? The nature of the speech? You're not okay with uh, students advocating illegal activities during uh, school? Okay. Uh, what was uh, anybody want to add to that opinion? Yeah. Yeah. So it's illegal relative to them. Then you're saying it, maybe it'll be a little bit more like that, the little Snapchat case, and so forth. Um, anybody else who uh, ruled in favor of the school want to chime in with some additional ones? What other courts ruled in favor of the school? This court? Just you. So you were in the dissent. All right, let's hear your dissent. Oh, so you were in the majority. Okay. So what other uh, reasons did, uh, uh, would you give? It's not defamatory. It doesn't necessarily reduce the reputation of the school. But what is, the, what is the counterbalance with respect to what schools are trying to establish? Proper learning environment, et cetera. Yeah, so this is, yeah, trust me, on these kinds of things, that's where, like, neighbors, parents, people like that are going to go, mm-hmm, yeah, what kind of school are you running there, pal? Right, so, I mean, like, if word got around, like, what, hap what would happen if, like, in uh, a local newspaper and so forth, there was a picture of a whole bunch of North Star students uh, with their brand new T-shirts that said, like, you know, worship Satan? That would be cool. Yeah. Do it with a paper? Honestly, I no, I mean, here's the deal. Is that protected speech? Yeah, because of the religious part. Would that enhance the uh, view and reputation of North Star in the community? Arguably uh, not. Yeah, it's like, I'm thinking of having my kid go to this school, and I don't know, I saw these t-shirts, and I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> More likely or less. But here's the difficult thing. It's kind of like your rights under the Constitution, your civil rights, at wherever they come from, they get to stand there regardless of majoritarian public opinion. The majority public opinion, they can't just sort of say, no, I don't like you. We vote to take away your rights. Do you understand that? No. This is a, no, here's the, here's the thing. Democracy can try to do that. Majoritarian point of view, we vote to take away your stuff, Caden. 
we all decided that we want your stuff, so we're going to vote to take away your stuff. And you're like, yeah, but it's like, there on the one hand, you've got democratic principles. Do you understand that? Countervailing that sometimes are individual civil rights so that the government cannot take those away, even if the government is supported by majority of the voters. That's a nice little package that we have of both things. Okay? D does the country have does the country have a right to take your life? No. I mean, if you commit a crime, like you murder the president or something like that, well then, you know, like, yeah, that's going to go through the courts. But you'll have all kinds of rights along the way. All right, now, so I want to hear from some of the other courts that's, that ruled in favor of the student. Okay? Did you guys rule in favor of the student? Okay, let's hear a point of view. Mm -hmm. No, I don't think that there are. In this area, there might be in some parts of the country, but as far as I know, uh, Satan worship is not a really um, uh, largely held point of view in, I don't know, any communities. And I'm not going to say anything, but I mean, it's like, you're going to be like, oh, well, I don't know, Garden City. Just kidding. No, not Garden City. Or CUNA, or STAR, or whatever. STAR, why do they call it STAR? Just kidding. Um, <laughs> you're like, ah! yeah. <laughs> whoa! It's a normal star. It's not upside down. Anyway, so I don't think that that's a majority point of view in any part of the country in particular. I mean, even Salem, for goodness sakes. Yeah, they killed off all their... Maybe just kidding. Yes. Okay. As far as the facts that I know, no. It was just a statement. And in fact, I think MK, you brought this up. It's like a joke. Yeah. MK, are you finished? All these other mature students right now are waiting uh, to know whether or not you're finished and we can move on. All right, awesome. Thank you very much. Over here and then over there. <laughs> now, you have to be careful if you're the Supreme Court. You don't get in there, hopefully, and go... Well, I don't know, the, 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 the vice principal, the principal, too hard. And by the way, oh my gosh, they would have gotten a great, that's not that good. I mean, it's legible. I mean, maybe some sparkles or something, you know. I don't know. Anthony, I disagree. I dissent. That is not the most beautiful uh, point of view sign. Honestly, when we get to some other signs, I'm going to show you some signs that are like really big and bold and beautiful. You might not necessarily agree with all the words that you see. You're like, oh my gosh, anyway. Oh, yeah, those are all kinds of signs. Whoa, that's coming down the pike. Okay? Yeah. Oh, that's coming down. That's coming down. Okay. Any other courts want to chime in with their opinions? Yes, okay, yes, Owen. Shh, have a quiet. Oh, in this court, yes, go ahead. Students. I'm going to stop you on that point because I think, going back to this, if you want to express your point of view, do you have to align with the school's point of view? No, I mean, these students didn't necessarily align with the school's point of view. Sometimes the school might, you know, it, it's like students can have their rights to express their various different points of view. This was interesting, and I mentioned this before. 
religious speech advocates were really concerned about how this decision was going to come out. And I'm going to tell you how that decision came out. Because they were like, look, please, do not l limit religious speech rights. Make this just about school 